apologise, Deputy Speaker, and apologise to the member for Mayo. I thought she was coming in a little bit later. But I rise to speak on the Fair Work Registered Organisations Amendment Bill 2019. Uh, and I just wanted to clarify for those people that were saw the title um, integrity, the word integrity in the title of the legislation, and would have no doubt thought that this was the, the Liberal and National Party's Commonwealth Integrity Commission legislation. I'm sure that people like Monica from Sydney would have thought, this is it, this is it, this is the, the legislation promised by Prime Minister Morrison back in December last year. Here we are, uh, the last day of July. Surely, with this government, they're doing what they said and bringing in uh, into, uh, legislation to establish a Commonwealth Integrity Commission to make sure that parliamentarians are doing the right thing. But no, sadly, Deputy Speaker, this is not that legislation. This is a broken promise from the government. Instead, it's focused on kicking unions. So I've listened to the speakers from both sides of the chamber on this bill, and I, I take some comfort from the, the words of the member for Mayo that she will be looking closely at this legislation because it is very important. Very important. And I do declare that I have worked for trade unions. Uh, I have worked for uh, the uh, independent education union, the union that looks after private schools uh, in, in a, in a, before coming into parliament. So I understand the good work that unions do. Uh, I've actually been uh, uh, helped people with unfair dismissals. I've helped people with all sorts of industrial matters, uh, with uh, discrimination matters. The, the work of union officials I, I have some understanding of. And I also have, uh, should declare that I have um, three brothers that work in the construction sector, so I have some understanding of that because that is a union that gets uh, the construction union gets mentioned by uh, government ministers two or three times every question time, and uh, probably ten or twenty times a day by the prime minister. He seems to be obsessed with this union. So I have some understanding of that sector, uh, and I've got a couple of nephews that work in that sector as well. So, sadly, this coalition government seems to be obsessed with union bashing. It is their favourite pastime. They're obsessed with it and think that it is in the national interest to do so. They don't care about the terrible conditions that employees have to put up with. They don't care whether employees are paying workers their entitlements. There's a deafening silence from those opposite when it comes to uh, the theft of uh, wages. They especially don't care whether work sites are safe. Labor took to the election a suite of policies that would protect workers and make sure building companies cannot avoid their obligations to their employees, to government, to pay their taxes, obviously, to homeowners and to honest businesses. Uh, and I'm just going to touch on some of these, uh, Deputy Speaker. The tradie pay guarantee, which was a requirement for large Commonwealth construction projects that would ensure that tradies who do the work on time get paid on time, something that both sides of the chamber would support. The $7 million tradie litigation fund to give the Australian Securities and Investment Commission the ability to run more difficult court cases without draining the corporate watchdog's resources. The director identification number so that all company directors would be required to obtain a unique director identification number with a 100-point identification check, as well as increased penalties associated with Phoenix activity. That is, so that the bad employers, the sharks who rip people off over and over again, would be prevented from doing so. And also a policy of naming and shaming that would allow the Commissioner of Taxation to name the individuals and entities as part of the penalty for the most serious tax offences, for those people not doing the right thing by society. These policies would have made a real difference to working Australians, and I ask those opposite to consider them. Uh, they're roaming around the policy wasteland looking for something to do. Uh, so, for them, kicking the occasional union tumbleweed there would be no. Uh, but, but for that, there'd be no movement at all. So the coalition government begins its seventh year in office in September. Seventh year in office, and I'm sure the member for Blackson remembers how long that has been. <laughs> These, uh, they, they aren't concerned about policy that would actually make a real difference to working people. They are concerned about economic policy to boost growth, wages and living conditions for all Australians. Instead, they just want to distract from their failures and entrench privilege. Today, uh, yesterday's Hilda survey confirmed what most of my constituents already know, that living standards are going backwards under the Liberals. And we see CPI data today confirming that. 
The median household income has declined by almost $500 in 2017, a fall of 0.6 per cent from 2016. What is particularly concerning is that there has been no increase in median household incomes for a decade. Many workers are finding it tough to make ends meet. Traders in the construction sector who aren't being paid on time or not paid at all by unscrupulous employers. They find it impossible to put food on the table or pay for the roof over their head. It's damaging for their financial health and also for their mental health. Labor has a, always has a positive plan, so we want to stop dodgy bo bosses ripping off subbies, their workers and taxpayers, policies that would have made a real difference. So I ask those opposite to consider this policy, these policies that I've detailed if they actually care about small businesses. In contrast, the coalition took to the election one plan uh, that was tax cuts, uh, and so now finding themselves back on that side of the chamber without any plan to govern, what did they do? They turned to their old favourite that, from that well-worn song sheet, divide, divide, divide. And it's the, the policy that be, begins with the verse on we hate unions, and we've heard it in every speech so far from those opposite. This bill, or something not dissimilar to it, was introduced in 2017 but lapsed when the parliament was prorogued in April. The stated purpose of the current bill before the House is to respond to community concern and the recommendations of the final report of the Royal Commission into Trade Union Governance and Corruption to ensure the integrity of registered organisations and their officials for the benefits of their members. The Royal Commission formed the view that the governance requirements of organisations should be more like those imposed on corporations rather than incorporated associations. But this bill proposes much harder regulation. Make sure you understand that. Much harder regulation on registered org organisations than actually exists for corporations. For example, it allows not only the registered organisation commissioner and the minister, but also any other person with sufficient interest any other person with sufficient interest to apply to the court for an order to disqualify an official or a of a registered organisation. This is a much harsher regime than that for corporations and differs from the recommendations of the Hain Royal Commission. The Hain Royal Commission specifically recommended that only the registered organisation commissioner should have standing to seek disqualification orders. This could be a disaster. So let's call this out for what it is. It's an attack on the mighty trade union movement, the mighty union movement. So shame on this Morrison government. Trade unions have a proud history in Australia. Workers rely on the union movement, be they in the movement for, uh, be there in the actual movement paying fees, or those workers that work alongside union members uh, and uh, get the benefits of their, what they fight for. Ever since the High Court's harvest decision decision in 1907, it's been an ex they've been an accepted part of the fabric of society and many years before that. It's been accepted that all Australian workers deserve to earn a third, fair day's pay for a fair day's work, and at the end of the day they should return home safe to their families. It would be a very different working environment if trade unions did not exist. If it wasn't for unions, we would not have annual leave, industrial awards that underpin pay in terms and conditions of employment for millions of workers. Penalty rates, although penalty rates are actually under threat from the, co the coalition government, both by deed and by inaction. Maternity leave, superannuation, equal pay for women, health and safety and workers' compensation, sick leave, long service leave, redundancy pay, allowances such as for uniforms, meal breaks and rest breaks. Workers once had to get through the whole day without any break at all. Collective bargaining and unfair dismissal protection. Now that's a long list. But there's many others I could add. Now, I won't detain the House too long because I'll now go through the list of employment conditions spontaneously provided by employers since that 1907 harvester decision. Zip. Zip. I'll take that interjection from the member for, for Hindmarsh. Macon. Macon, sorry. Zip. Absolutely nothing. Now, we know that union density has been on the decline since the 1970s. So if ever there was a time when workers needed fearless union representation, it is now, and particularly in the construction industry. As I said, by talking to my brothers and nephews who work in this industry, we see people getting ripped off and, and even worse. I've had one brother come, come literally inches away from death, having two people killed right alongside him. We know it's a dangerous, a dangerous industry. There's been significant slowing in the annual rate annual rate of growth in average weekly earnings for adult men working full-time in the construction industry 
between November 2013 and November 2018, so the time the coalition has been in office. The time we, we say it, that when the coalition has been asleep at the wheel years, we'll call them. For all employees in construction during that period, there was an annual average growth in average weekly earnings of 0.8 per cent, which is considerably below the annual average growth of 4.7 per cent achieved between November 2008 and November 2013, the Rudd and Gillard years. But the growth in average weekly earnings in only one, is only one measure to gauge how crook the economy. Arguably the best measure of wage, wage growth by industry is the wage price index. Using this measure, the annual growth in wages in the five years to December 2018 was more subdued in male-dominated industries such as mining and construction. The growth in these industries was 1.6 per cent and 1.9 per cent respectively. The all-industry average growth was actually 2.2 per cent. So what is most telling in the previous five years from December 2007 to December 2013, the average annual growth in mining and construction was 4 per cent and 3.5 per cent respectively. So, that's government data. It's absolutely clear that wages in those industries are stagnating. So don't listen to the fear campaign coming out of the Liberal Party. I've seen the memes. I've seen the information they're putting out there. Dodgy figures being trotted out by the dodgy Liberal Party propaganda union about the costs associated with the, the building industry. On top of stagnating wages under this government's watch, dodgy building firms are deliberately avoiding paying workers. Find your own chair if you want to make a comment. Thank you. Phoenix is a practice where dodgy directors deliberately Order. burn companies in an attempt to avoid their obligations to employees, government, homeowners and honest businesses. Phoenix activity not only hurts hard-working Australians, their families and their communities, but it costs the economy billions of dollars. One estimate is that it costs the Australian economy in excess of $5 billion per year, which is more than $200 for every person in Australia. But the Morrison government is doing nothing to stop these dodgy companies from ripping off hard-working Australians. Instead, it attacks the very organisations that stand up for workers and their families. Just last week, a court fined a Perth builder, Gary Hanson, for breaking industrial laws by refusing to allow union officials entry to a worksite, the same worksite where a German backpacker had died weeks before after falling 13 floors through an open shaft. The union, union officials had a lawful right at all times to enter the site, and there clearly was a need. But the judge said Mr Hanson was driven by his blind hatred of unions. Now, I don't know Mr Hanson, but it was not the first time that Mr Hanson or his company had been brought before the law. He had previously been fined for exploiting migrant workers. Mr Hanson is a major coalition donor and proudly admits that he's a member of the Western Australian Liberal Party. So why isn't the Prime Minister outraged about Mr Hanson's law-breaking Liberal Party construction? But why hasn't the PM or the, any of the, the Western Australian Industrial Relations Minister sought his expulsion from the Liberal Party? It's clear that the Liberals are equally driven by a blind hatred of unions. The Liberals' only agenda is to destroy unions without regard to how this will impact on the fabric of Australian society. Unions make sure work sites are safe for workers. Union officials need to enter work sites to carry out inspections. I know I've, hold, I've held that same card. The very lives of workers depend on union officials being granted access to work sites. Surely no one would argue that shutting down an unsafe work site until it can be made safe is not a life-saving function of the union movement. Now, the actual working days lost through work sites being shut down due to industrial action have been decreasing for the past two decades. Note, that's in total. Even though there's millions of more Australians, the total number of working days has actually gone down, as well as obviously the ratio. There are already laws in place that limit industrial action taken by employees. There are limits on the type of allowable bargaining demands through protected industrial action, and many enterprise bargaining agreements prevent industrial action during the term of that agreement. In fact, some might say that the uh, industrial relations power has completely shifted even though it was a Labor government that actually brought in industrial, that, that changed to centralised bargaining and, and the like. Uh, that is something that uh, does not give a lot of rights to the, workplace, uh, to the employees in the workplace. So is the Prime Minister tightening up the laws and penalties against this despicable behaviour by dodgy builders that endangers the lives of working Australians? No, we are not seeing action on, on that at all. The only industrial relations laws that the Morrison government have brought into parliament are all about in, at, attacking unions. As I said from the start, this is not legislation bringing in the Commonwealth Integrity Commission, as promised in December last year by Prime Minister Morrison. Instead, 
This is a piece of legislation that is all about attacking, uh, attacking unions, and the government should be ashamed of it. I thank